Este es un espacio de sin estar en Canal M. Amigos de Sin Estar de Canal M, bienvenidos una vez más. Estamos en la rueda de prensa de Superman, la cual se estrenará el 14 de junio de este 2013, donde nos honra la visita a México de Henry Cavill, quien nos acompañará contestándonos algunas preguntas acerca de esto. Es un honor tenerlos aquí en esta conferencia de prensa de la película que sin duda es de las más esperadas de este año, El Hombre de Acero, una cinta dirigida por Zack Snyder y que cuenta con la... Coproducción, bueno, con la producción de Christopher Nolan y el argumento también, eh, la participación de grandes actores como Kevin Costner, Russell Crowe, Diane Lane, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Lauren Fishburne y por supuesto el actor Henry Cavill. Esta película se estrena a nivel mundial el próximo 14 de junio y en México contaremos con los formatos de 2D, 3D, 3D IMAX para todas las personas que gusten verla con las mayores posibilidades que nos puede brindar el séptimo arte. Vamos a ver un tráiler de esta película, El Hombre de Acero, y les agradecemos eh, su presencia también a todos los medios de Latinoamérica que se encuentran con nosotros en México. Y bueno, veamos un poco de esta película. Hi Henry, welcome to Mexico. We are very happy to have you here. And um, I want to start this press conference asking you as an actor. How did you manage to develop the three different sides of your character, Cal, Clark, and Superman, while keeping them together as a whole? Um, well, in my mind, Clark, Cal, and Superman are all very much the same character, um, just different facets of. The way I like to think of it is, if when at work, we behave one way. When at home, we behave another way and when we're doing something in particular which may be out of character but heroic for example is another way and that'd be the superman thing ultimately it's all the same we're all the same person in those different roles we're just playing different roles depending on the environment we're in bueno vamos a comenzar eh, con la primera pregunta corre a cargo de televisa espectáculos jorge ugalde tiene la palabra Um, well, it's my first time in Mexico, and so I'm very happy to be here. Um, and I haven't got to see Mexico City yet at all, because I got in late last night. But hopefully, um, after this trip, I'll, I'll want to come back and uh, see the city and explore the country a bit more. Um, as far as directors go, um, I'd love to work with Guillermo del Toro. Um, he's a fantastic and very, very talented director, and a very nice man too. So, uh, fingers crossed, I get that opportunity. La siguiente pregunta es por parte de Prodi Jemisen y es Alejandra Cruz quien está encargada de hacer la pregunta. Hi. There are some roles that you couldn't make in important movies. Uh, do you think that uh, that Man of Steel was waiting for you? Do you believe in destiny? Um, I don't know if I believe in destiny. Um, I do believe that this is a wonderful opportunity, and if the other roles had happened before, then I wouldn't have this opportunity. I'm just very, very thankful to be sitting here um, attached to such a wonderful movie with so many talented people involved. Vamos ahora con 15 a 20, Valeria Contreras, por favor. Hello. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous. Uh, did you ever think that you will be working with a star like Russell Crowe in the most anticipated movie of the summer? Uh, no, I, I never thought that, especially after I met him when I was 16 years old in boarding school. Um, he was working there, um, I was an extra, and I went up and shook his hand. And there wasn't a second then that I thought, 13 years later, we'd be about to release a movie together. Um, so I'm incredibly happy and uh, just very, very excited to have everyone see this movie. You're very welcome. 
La siguiente pregunta es de Círculo Mix Up, Jacqueline Sánchez. Hello, Henry. I was wondering, how did you manage to create such a unique character amongst all these new superhero movies? How did you prepare yourself mentally to get all that innocence and such a pure soul character? Um, that's a good question. It, Thank you. <laughs> uh, with, with Superman, I think there's so much in the comic books from the source material which we don't, we haven't seen before. Um, there is a genuine innocence to the character because he's never truly been able to express himself. Um, if you can imagine what it's like going through life, never having hugged someone so tight, um, you could just squash them. The problem with Superman is that he actually would. And so he never has that human connection. And it's that sense of um, detachment and loss and loneliness um, in the character, while not being overpowering, while not making him morbid, but just that, that sense of being alone that lends a very, very strong innocence to the character, purely because he's so powerful and we all know it. And so that's pretty much what I focused on to create that. Vamos ahora a pedirle a Liz Hill de Cine en Línea que haga la siguiente pregunta, por favor. Welcome to Mexico, Henry. Thank you. Um, lo voy a hacer en español. Me gustaría saber, porque sabemos que durante algunos castings no tuviste la suerte de llegar a, a conseguir el papel que querías, como lo fue con Harry Potter, o James Bond, o en Twilight. ¿Y qué, ¿En qué momento estaba, qué estabas haciendo cuando recibiste esa llamada de Zack? Cuando te dijo que ibas a ser Superman, ¿y a quién fue a las primeras personas que le dijiste? Um, I was actually playing computer games at the time, and uh, it was it was an online game, and so I didn't have the opportunity to pause it. You know, you play in teams, and people rely on you to do your job in that team, and it was at a high point of the game, and so the phone rings. I don't even look at the phone. Um, I'm just playing with it. I'll, I'll you know answer it later. I'll call that person back. At the last second, I look down. I see it's Zack Snyder calling, so I dive for the phone, try to answer it. I miss the call. And um, I'm thinking, oh great, I've just ruined my career because of World of Warcraft. And, um, which I'm sure a lot of people have thought as well. And uh, it was, and then I tried calling him back, I didn't get an answer, then eventually he got a hold of me. And uh, he basically, he sort of tricked me. He was talking to me like he was letting me down easy and he wasn't going to give me the role. And then eventually he said, you know, and uh, yeah, basically Henry, I was just calling to see if you want to do a little movie with me. Um, and at which point after that, it felt very surreal. I wasn't prepared for yes, because of all the other movies which had gone before and all the effort and time I put into that and hope, um, I expected no, just because that was standard procedure. And then um, when it finally came to yes, I didn't know how to react. And so I sat there quite quietly for about 15 minutes, just trying to work out whether this actually happened or whether I just dreamt it. Um, And then I tried to call my, my parents and my brothers, and not one of them picked up. So I was left alone with this crazy thought of thinking, uh, have, have I gone completely insane now? Um, but then eventually everyone did, and I got to share the news. Gracias. Eh, Grupo Fórmula, por favor, Eric Gallardo. Acá. Bueno, buenos días, Henry. Eh, bienvenido a México. Muchas felicidades por la interpretación de este personaje tan bien hecho. Este, lo primero que te voy a preguntar es... Eh, ¿Alguna vez pensaste en usar ese tipo de capa? Todos los niños la usan y supongo que en algún momento tú también la usaste. Este, ¿Tú eh, alguna vez viste a, a este, el primer Superman que hubo en la pantalla? ¿Qué es lo que piensas ahora de este, de este Superman que tú haces con referencia a ese Superman? Y el, la última pregunta que te quiero hacer es, este, ¿qué hay de diferente en Henry Cavill antes de Superman y después de Superman? Um, okay, uh, I'm just trying to work out which question to answer first. Um, yes, I wore a cape as a kid, um, of course. I, I think we all did at some stage, running around the garden. Um, I never thought that I'd actually be doing this professionally. I never thought that this would come around, especially after the first time, where it was very unbelievable that it was happening. 
Um, I think I was about 21 years old and it was crazy. And then it didn't happen. And so that sort of cemented the idea that that was never going to happen in my head. Um, and now it's an amazing opportunity to be a part of it. Um, I'm just trying to remember your other questions. <laughs> Oh, okay, the character of Superman in the movie. Um, what is important about this movie is that we have made Superman for a modern age. And what Superman was when he was first seen in a past era had exactly the same effect on that audience. If we had that Superman appear on screens this, these days, it, beg your pardon, sorry? <laughs> um, it wouldn't have the same effect. Um, as it did then and we have just evolved the character to have that exact same effect and um, hopefully it does fingers crossed La siguiente pregunta es del diario Imagen le pedimos que se ponga de pie Fernando Garcilita Hi Henry welcome to Mexico thank you If Superman is an ideal of hope the actor who plays the role becomes a legend and, I, and iconic are you ready to deal with this and how does it feel to be in the suit of Superman? Um, no, I'm not ready to deal with it at all. Um, I don't think there's any way you can prepare for that. I'm starting to get an idea of what it's like. Um, and although it's new, it's very exciting at the same time. Um, it's just something I'm going to embrace. I'm going to ride that wave and uh, roll with the punches if they come. Uh, what's it like wearing the suit? Uh, yeah. The suit's very special. Um, it has a special energy to it, almost like a physical force. Um, I keep on likening it to if two people were to cook you a meal and there were the same ingredients in each meal um, and you were just as hungry every time you ate it, <laughs> but for one reason or for some reason, one of the meals was that much better. And that's because the person who cooked it put love into it. And when it comes to the suit, the same thing. It's anyone could have put this suit together with the same measurements, uh, the same concepts, um, but for some reason this was incredibly special because people put love and attention and they had a genuine respect and importance held for the character. Um, so it felt, you put it on, as much as the suit was slightly uncomfortable, when you put it on you feel, diff I felt very, very different and everyone around me treated me very differently as well. And so it's, I can't quite put my finger on it, but the well, suit has something very special about it. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. La siguiente pregunta es de Uno TV. Le pedimos a Iván Zapata que haga su pregunta. Henry. Hey, man. Thank you so much for putting on that S. Man. It was great. It was great. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, since 1938, since the character first came out, um, it's been evolving. Uh, you said it yourself, it's been evolving. But right now, uh, Superman is kind of like clustered into this like naivety and he's kind of ignorant and this little boy scout and he really doesn't have that much of a fan base outside of people who, who really love the character. Do you think this movie helps um, cement him in another way? Like really change the idea that people have about Superman and how does it change the idea that people have about Superman right now? Um, yes, I, I believe it's going to, very much so. Um, the one thing about Superman in past live action, I think, which is very present in the comic books, but for some reason they've made a live action, is um, the humanity of it. What makes him really special is that although he's this alien, he's so very human at the same time. And we're really bringing that to people's attention in this movie. It's very much a base in reality people will be able to associate with his pain and therefore his decision-making process. And because he experiences that pain, when he makes what is perceived as a good decision or as a decision for good, it makes it mean more as opposed to, well, of course he's doing the good thing because he's Superman. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I, I genuinely think this is going to change the way people who aren't just mega fans of the character, it's going to change the way they look at him. Uh, yeah, my favorites um, were Death of Superman, The Return of Superman, Red Sun, and Bat Superman, Batman, The Search for Kryptonite. Gracias. Eh, la siguiente pregunta es eh, de Jorge Alberto Rodríguez, de Rock 101. Uh, welcome. Um, what was the casting process for this film, and what was the pressure like to be playing such an iconic character? And... Um, 
Well, it's, it's been said recently that there won't be a confirmation for a sequel until they see results on this movie. But assuming there will be, are you on board for it? And do you know if Zack Snyder and Christopher Nolan would be on board for it? And finally... <laughs> uh, Someone write this down for me, please. If it had anything to do with this movie, would you be on board for a Justice League, Justice League film? Um, the casting process was... Very short, actually. Um, normally for these kind of things in the past, it's been you know weeks and months of meetings and auditions and finally a screen test or two even. And this one I had an audition, December 2010, and then a screen test in January, and then I, was, I had the job by the end of January. Um, so it was very, very fast moving. Um, and any pressures I felt, I had been through this before with uh, a previous incarnation of Superman which never made it to the screen. And I'd already lost it once. So it, I wasn't fearful of losing it again. It, this was just like a second chance. And so I had no, there was no pressure for myself on that side. And when it came to getting the role and the pressure which I potentially may feel from everyone else, I didn't dwell on that. I decided that um, if I was going to pay heed to external pressures, it's going to negatively affect my career or my performance. And so I just focused on this, the pressure I was going to put on myself to do the job to the best of my ability. Um, no, we don't know if there's any sequels happening just yet, but if they do happen, I would love to keep on telling this story because I love the character, I put a lot into it, and I, I, I share something with the character now because of what I went through. Um, Zack Snyder and Christopher Nolan, I have no idea whether they'll be involved again. I really hope so, because without them, this movie wouldn't be what it is. And Justice League, uh, Justice League, it could be an amazing story, but it's got to be very carefully told. Um, you can't just so say, okay, Man of Steel's out now, and now we're going to have Justice League, because they're too powerful a character. If you have all of a sudden a world, you know, filled with these godlike characters, it's just not going to make sense. And the whole point of what we've done with Man of Steel is a base in reality. And so there's got to be a gentle introduction to that so Justice League makes sense. Um, but yes, if done properly, I'd very much want to be a part of it. Thank you. Gracias. La siguiente pregunta la va a hacer Rubén Armenta de Cine Extremo. Hola, bienvenido a México. La pregunta es, ¿cómo veías antes a Superman y a los cómics? De hacer la película y ahora que hiciste la película, ¿cómo ves a Superman y los cómics? Um, this is going to sound like a very boring answer, but I saw him exactly as I played him. I've always viewed the character that way. I was never a comic book fan growing up, but I, I never understood why people thought Superman was boring. Um, he's, the very fact that he does or tries to do the right thing at all times makes him incredibly interesting. Because someone who just does bad stuff or cool stuff or is sarcastic, to me, that's boring. And I always realized he was just lonely soul who just wanted to do the best that he could for everyone around him. Um, so nothing's changed in my opinion. I just got a more complex view of him because I got to live in his shoes for a bit. Gracias. Ahora le pedimos a Gerardo Gil de ABC Radio que haga la siguiente pregunta. Entonces... Ah, que siempre sí para preguntar. A veces radio, Gerardo Gil. ¿Qué tal? Bueno, acabas de comentarnos que no sabes si va a haber una segunda parte. De haberla, ¿qué te gustaría explorar del personaje? ¿Qué te gustaría que estuviera escrito en el, en el, en el personaje a ti como actor? Um, very good question. And I would love to give a very complex answer, but it would take forever and I'd need to put more thought into it to actually do it justice. Um, simply, just the idea now that the world knows who he is and he can allow himself to be that. For the first time, we see it in the movie, him allowing himself to be that, but that's just the first time. And now we get to see him, if we were to have a number two, we would get to see him um, indulge in that and enjoy it. And then the questions he has to ask himself about being this godlike being, and, and openly so. Um, and just his interaction with humanity. Because although 
humanity's okay with him when he's saving the day. What about when he's not? How do they feel? What questions are they still asking? So, that kind of thing. Esto fue todo, amigos de Canal M. Esperemos lo hayan disfrutado igual que nosotros y los esperamos a la próxima. Gracias. Este es un espacio de cine está en Canal M. Canal M. Canal M. Canal M.